people really hate Sag because of this play of freedom. We're like, well, we always have another option. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we genuinely feel that way. Yeah, I mean, and I feel do. other people they hate the other option so much they feel like there's there's nothing there for me. For sure. I mean, also, um, Sag, they're thinking so abundantly. And so positively, and Jupiter is so grand and large that, like, there is going to be another option because my mind is going to create it and it's going to manifest it. Hi, friends. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. You made it through the week. I'm proud of you already. Yes. It'd be hard out here. I know I already I say that every week, but truly, I feel like life is really hard, and everyone has their own battles, and we never really know what the other is going through. Even when we talk about it with friends and stuff, you know, like you never really know because yeah. some people are more open with how they're feeling, you know, and some people are just naturally more to be like, I'm not gonna open up. Right? Like, uh, even if they ask and, like, people really pry, they're just not ones to, to open up. So I just want everyone to know that it's okay to not be okay. And if you're having a good week or you kicked ass this week, I'm really happy for you too, you know? Yes. But I feel like sometimes life is just a harder struggle. And if that was a hard week for you, I'm proud of you. So something I want to talk about that happened to me over the weekend. I was out with my boyfriend during lunch and it was busy where we were at. And there was only one girl who was uh, the waitress for like this whole large dining area. So yeah. I felt bad for her, right? And clearly yeah. a lot of people were trying to come and eat at this restaurant. Right. And um, me and my man are in deep conversation. Oh God, <laughs> this is gonna make me angry. <laughs> It made me angry. <laughs> and these two girls come over and immediately speak to my boyfriend and are like, um, are we able to just sit down at a table or did the waitress come and ask you? Mind you, his, like, they have to, like, turn to speak to him. It's much easier to talk to me. Also, how dare you fucking address my man before you address me yeah. when we're clearly on a date? Like, who no, the fuck are you? No, literally. I don't know if it was because I'm on my period too, but like that really irked no, me. No, I mean that's that's literally common sense, common courtesy. Right. Like if I'm ever meeting a couple, I'm always gonna actually introduce myself to the woman first. Yes. Just because that's like I feel like it's well mannered to do. And because as a woman, I wanna make the other woman feel safe to be like, I'm not that type of bitch. Right. I respect you. Right. I'm not here to be weird. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, so the fact just that these. Like I would expect a woman to do the same for me when I'm with my boyfriend. Right. So the fact that these two hoes. <laughs> they hoes Had now. the audacity. They hoes now. <laughs> to speak, to even look at my man no, before literally. looking at me. No, for like, real. No, I would have been. What the hurt. fuck? And on my period, oh, murder. Like, it's done. Right. So what happens? <laughs> so what, like, I need... So, of course, like, Alex, you know, we're like I said, we're deep in a conversation. So he doesn't even look at them at first. He's like, are they saying something? And I immediately turn and I'm like, no, she sat us, so you should just wait. Yeah. <laughs> right. They, she came and helped him in, like, five minutes or whatever. But I was just, like, so annoyed. And my yeah. energy was just, like, no. reeking, don't even look over here. No, I feel that. I let it go because I didn't want to ruin yeah. my lunch. But could you have... Oh, 100%. I know. And was yeah. I a little annoyed on our walk back? Yeah. I sure was. You know yeah. I brought it back up again. I yeah. was like, so yeah, that was really funny that those yeah. bitches, like, Like, why did I feel so comfortable you? doing that? Like, right. I was so annoyed. And Alex, you know, understood yeah. my feelings, but also I felt... He could have been more like, yeah, fuck them. Like, yeah. how dare they talk to me, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, not talk no, to you first. For because sure. if you think about it, if the situation was flipped and a man came and spoke to me before yeah. they spoke to my man, yeah, that would be incredibly disrespectful. You know what I mean? So I was very irritated. He understood. But I was just like, I want you to understand more. And again, maybe that was my period. Just like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> really for sure. Me. Well, I mean, if that, 
if that's what your intuition was telling you that like you felt the need to be irritated, then like that's you, that's your yeah that's your way of feeling, and that's okay. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, like if they if you felt the energy and it didn't come off disrespectful, I have a feeling maybe you wouldn't have been so angry. But you probably felt the energy and you probably felt that it was disrespectful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you're coming all confused or whatever, like maybe I can understand. Um, you know what I mean? I'm not going to always be like, ruff, 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 right. when, a no, man, of course. when a woman's talking to my man. <laughs> but if, if you felt like it was like disrespectful, then like I believe you. Right. Because yeah. how many, I don't know. I just feel like there are plenty of times in my life where something like this happens and mm -hmm. I'm not irritated. Yeah. You know, like how many times do I talk to a woman and she doesn't bug me? But yeah. for some reason, the way that they were like yeah. addressing us. Yeah really just didn't sit right with me. And oh. it took all of my strength yeah. to not let it Unleash. ruin. Yeah, the whole day. My meal. No, for real, for real, for real. And it was such a nice day Yeah. in don't, the city. Don't even let it, don't even let it consume you. Fuck, fuck those bitches. No, fuck those <laughs> hoes. <laughs> Imagine we lived in a world where it was acceptable to just like say anything you want to say. First of all, whore. Right. <laughs> Back up, you little bitch. What makes you think you can invade <laughs> my little love bubble, bitch? Right. Literally. I'm just like, uh, take a number before you want to speak to me. Yeah. Everyone wants to. I'm just kidding. Right. <laughs> there was also no excuse me. So I feel like that's what also oh, made yeah. me very oh, irritated. I, hey, so you're just going to. You're just going to come oh, no. into our conversation. You're just going to insert yourself, drop yeah. in. Right. Oh, no. Oh, absolutely the fuck not. Like, no. No. Like, is you drunk? And is, if you is drunk, get out of my face. No, that's, uh, yeah, that, that, yeah, that's irritating. Don't be rude. Yeah, for and real. And annoying. Just have manners. That's all it takes, really. More people, most people don't have manners these days. Genuinely. Like, truly. I would like you more. I would trust you more if you came correct. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But some people are just, they're just rude. Or they have an ulterior agenda. It could be one of both. Right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, since we're talking about like manners and shit, I saw this post and I thought it was interesting. It was a tweet and I thought we could talk about it. It's a tweet by Nicole Elodie, the mm. High Priestess 11 on Twitter. Mm. Um, they tweeted, your memory was wiped when you came to earth, but your moral compass is extremely strong. And that's the tool you've used to lead you to this point in your healing. Mm. And this reminded me of what you were talking about, because I, I do genuinely feel like some people don't have any moral compass and I can't help but think if like it's their first lifetime on earth or yeah. what's going on there. Cause like, how do you, how do you not have any sort of past knowledge yeah. to help you make any sort of decisions in this life? And it's not Truly. just about age. Like people, you know, people that are 12, like, oh, you're so, you're, you act so mature for yeah. your age. These 50 year olds acting fucking mm -hmm. crazy. So I can't help but think that like, yeah, a lot of people, like, they lack the moral compass to make healthy decisions. Yeah. Um, and I believe, you know, obviously we come to this earth with no memories of our past lives. Like, that's a fact. Yeah. But I, I, do, I do agree in the sense that that is one of the things that I think we do bring to this planet when it comes to our past lives is our moral compass. and. Mm -hmm empathy and like things that we learned depending on what we went through like we don't have direct memories to be like this is who I was this is who my family was this is what I did in my past life but you kind of have the feelings yeah um and the lessons that you learn through those feelings mm -hmm. like almost like that inner yearning or that inner telling like this is a good idea or maybe this is a bad idea yeah like, I shouldn't do that and I I feel like you're right because the people who are maybe like first uh first time being on this planet, mm -hmm. um, they are so chaotic because they don't have anything to derive from. Yeah. You know? That's so true. Like, it, it's like a clean, I mean, clean. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want to describe yeah. it as that, but it's like a clean slate um, because there's no pool. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And, like, that, that would be so interesting to find out because they say, like, um, they, I don't know who they is, you know, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> they say that the people you find, your soul family here, they're your soul family in your other lives too. You may not have had the same relationship like mother, daughter, best friend, husband, wife, whatever it may be. It could be a different type of relationship. Like your mom could have been your husband in another mm -hmm. life. Like, mm -hmm. like, like it's weird. You yeah. know what I yeah. mean? It's weird. <laughs> um, and I believe that, but it makes me think like when people are here and it's their first lifetime, 
how is it harder for them to gravitate towards their soul family because mm. like it's their first time so they they don't have any karmic lessons with that specific individual or those specific individuals mm. so it's hard for them to find them in their first lifetime yeah you know yeah probably and probably sucks to be their soulmate because <laughs> they're dumb as fuck <laughs> yeah and you're learning all their <laughs> lessons with them you know oh, what yeah, i mean like sure. you already have your own lessons that you need to learn in this lifetime and then you're carrying like you carrying somebody too or, and i know that's fucked up but some people choose that as their life path or you or, know or. what i mean yes but what if you actually that's not a thing that happens like if you're coming as your first lifetime, your whole soul family is coming for their first oh, lifetime. Oh, so you all just all <laughs> mess together. <laughs> like, who's to say? The blind leading the blind. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <gasps> you yeah. know? Like, yeah. the Michelsons, like that. Klaus Michelson, like his whole family <laughs> was evil from the beginning. <laughs> like, they were a family, and then they were vampires. And they were <laughs> yeah. The Vampire Diaries. Come on, you guys. Yeah. Catch up. Duh. <laughs> Right? Like, that could yeah. be a possibility, too. That could definitely be a possibility. Mm. I also really like this quote because, you know, sometimes when you're feeling really lost mm -hmm. and you're asking a bunch of other people, like, oh, what I should do, where I should go, and you still aren't feeling like this is – you haven't had your aha moment, you know? Yeah. And, like, people feel that, you know? Like, okay, I'm still not connecting with what it is. And when you take the time to be by yourself, like that voice comes out stronger, you know, it allows, you can have space to um, hear that inner compass, that moral compass to say, hey, this is how you should go rather than getting lost in what other people are feeling. And, you know, you continue to, again, feel like you're not having, having that aha moment. And maybe if you're feeling like you're not having that aha moment, you need to sit by yourself more or if it's not coming maybe you're a first generation person <laughs> you just tapped a, created a whole new term a first generation soul <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah no i mean for for real i i was also thinking you know when you're doing the right thing aka when you have a moral compass that's when you're healing and doing the right thing isn't always the easiest thing to do mm -hmm. it's, it may be the harder choice of the two but it's the right thing even though it hurts and like that's how you heal yourself a lot of healing is actually very very painful mm -hmm. because um you're going through something that you've never gone through before you you're rebuilding yourself in ways that you've never rebuilt yourself before so and through the use of that moral compass is how you're able to heal because you're making hard decisions but right decisions mm-hmm mm-hmm and I feel like, too, that's why, I don't know, even though I was saying it's good to be by yourself and hear your own moral compass, like kind of like you were saying earlier, too, we have people in our lives who are our soul families who are meant to teach you and help get you to the next parts of your life as well. So don't be afraid to share what's on your heart. And if you don't feel like, you know, they're reflecting back on you in a good way, then you don't take that energy with you, right? Yeah. But like that doesn't mean you don't share what you're going through with people because you never know who is meant to help get you to the next stage of your life. Like I genuinely believe that. And I feel that some people... On the flip side, you know, when you're going through a really hard time, kind of like I was saying at the beginning of this episode, you know, we don't reach out to the people that we really need and we suffer, you know, and it's, it's no fun to suffer in silence. And I also feel when you do that moral compass can maybe, you can feel more lost depending on the type of person that you are. You know yeah. what I mean? No, I mean, absolutely. I feel like your problems won't be solved if you don't share them with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like, who's to say that if you don't share, you might not share those problems with the people around you. And I feel like maybe not only will that weaken the bond you have with your close circle or friends or family or partner, but I also feel like maybe that's what we need to do in order to strengthen our bond and realize, oh my God, like we are soul family. Yeah. And they might have the power to ultimately help you in a way stronger way than like a, another person would do outside of your soul family but unless you open up to them they won't be able to share that power with you like what if we can heal our soul family 
much easier than other people because we know them, because we understand each other, Mm -hmm. you know, but we just need to find them and trust them. Yeah. You know? And it's, I understand that it's scary because there are a lot of shitty people in this world, but I encourage everyone to show up bravely for yourself because, you know, sometimes when you are acting scared or you feel like my problems aren't worthy of being told to someone you're actually robbing them of being the good friend to you that you deserve as well Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it it sounds silly but I feel like you're also being fucked up to them because they don't have the opportunity to show up in your life the way that they want to no that makes sense and also in a way that you probably need you know because like again, as your soul family or, like, a best friend or just someone who really knows you, like, we see things that you don't always know, you know? Like, Sarah knows so much stuff about me that I probably don't realize, but she could name off 10 billion things, you know, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And that's really valuable information that I feel like we don't always ask people about. No, we we don't, and we almost assume that they can't help us. And who's to say maybe the first few times they try, it's not hitting, You just kind of got to teach them to be like, that's not the kind of love I need. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I've had to do that with friends before is like, this may work with your other friends, but like I, I need this, that, and the third to make me feel better. You know what I mean? Or like, I need you to be asking me these types of questions to check in on me. And like, granted, you know, I wasn't doing that when I was younger through lots of self love and self-healing, I've realized what I need, you know what I mean? Any type of relationship. So I'm able to verbalize that to the person I'm talking to. So like you need to also, again, it comes back to the point of be with yourself, figure out what it is that you need. So it's easier for you to ask people for help. Mm -hmm. Cause when they ask you, some people don't know how to help you. You know what I mean? And like at the end of the day, you can learn a lot from each other. If you have a conversation about like what what works for you when it comes to healing? How can mm-hmm. we heal each other? Right. You know, like, like let's, me, let's make each other laugh. Like, let's have fun together. But also, it's important to realize, like, how can we heal each other? Healing is so important. Yeah. The world is a scary place, and it breaks you or tries to break you in so many ways. Um, it's good to have people around you that are there to, to nourish you and heal you. Mm-hmm. You know? And to remind also and encourage you of maybe that voice you know like like I said if you're thinking sometimes too again it it totally depends on the type of person you are (laughs) because I feel for example you know let's say I want to do something right and I feel it in my hearts of hearts but I'm nervous and then I share with Sarah Sarah I think I really want to do this thing and she's like yeah she's part of my soul family and she helps uplift me and encourages me and reminds me that I can do this thing mm-hmm. and that can help empower me and push me again into the direction that you're supposed to be going yeah in. and that's ultimately what I feel like your moral compass is is like pushing you to your higher purpose to your reason of like life and like why you're here to serve and help other people you yeah know? yeah you know I was also thinking that like I think it's also important to have your soul family and the people you trust in your tribe to ultimately make you decide what you want to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like the right type of friends and family and whatever, like uh, they'll see the potential in you. Like the example you said, like, yeah, you can do it. Like positive reinforcement is always a good thing. Um, But ultimately I feel like whether it's yes or no, do it, don't do it. I feel like the right people need to make that decision be yours mm-hmm. um, because you can't depend on people to also do everything for you, make every decision for you. Correct. They'll help you kind of have that confidence within yourself to make that decision at the end of the day. Like they obviously want you to go one way or the other, mm-hmm. but they're not going to be like forced you and force your hand if you're not ready or if you don't want to. Cause that's also, I feel like that can be toxic in some ways too. Mm-hmm. So make sure that, you know, your people around you, if you're someone that hasn't found their voice yet, or maybe when it comes to a certain thing, you're not as confident yet, don't let other people make decisions for you as easy as it is. Yeah. No, you're so right. I think you had a key point in there where it's like they encourage you to make the decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You Ultimately, know? Yeah. they leave it to you. Exactly. And there's a different way of like encouraging someone in what you want them to do and saying, 
I believe in you, yeah. you can make this decision on your own. Yeah. You know? For sure. And, and that's you, different. And you don't hold it against them when they don't do it the way you would do it or the way that you would want them to do it. Exactly. Because sometimes people, you know, can be aggressive with like what they would do or what they think is right. And maybe they are right, but it's wrong of them to get mad at you if you don't follow follow through with what they thought you should do. Mm-hmm. You know, because then again, you're making decisions based on other people's needs and what they think you should do. And you're not living for yourself. Right. And you're not moving at the pace that is comfortable for you. Yeah. And you're ultimately not following your moral compass. E- exactly. Exactly. You're letting it get pushed by others. It- Exactly, and you're trying to catch up, Mm -hmm. or you're trying to follow someone else's moral compass, and that doesn't necessarily align with yours. Right. And maybe it's time to not be friends with those people, or be in that relationship, or maybe have to break away from your family, because as comfortable as this relationship is to you, you see that your moral compasses are not going down the same road no more. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And And it's sad, but I feel like when we're separated from our own moral compass, when we've been around the wrong people for too long, we are a ghost version of ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Nothing's hitting. No, it's not hitting. We know (laughs) we're not in the right place. Yeah. We feel lost. We feel disconnected. Mm -hmm. We don't feel as passionate as we used to feel. We don't feel things as boldly as we used to feel. We Mm -hmm. just don't experience joy anymore. Right. Because we have this like guilt of not being authentic. Yeah, or like a deep anger, you know, or resentment Resentment. because Mm -hmm. you aren't doing the things that you actually want to do. You're trying to make other people happy. And And sometimes, you know. It's poison, y'all. It's, we blame other people and maybe they were toxic and it was their fault too, but ultimately you should be mad at yourself. Yeah. Because no one, you know, no one should have that kind of power over you. Yeah. Maybe they were aggressive and maybe they were pushy. But, like, ultimately, it's up to you to step away from something if it doesn't feel authentic to you anymore. Whether that's a belief or a job or whatever it may be. Yeah. It always takes two to tango, you know? Yeah. And I also mean that in, like, there's two sides to a coin. There's always an option, yeah. <laughs> you know? And I feel like a lot of people forget that because they don't like the other option so much. And mm-hmm. it's like, well... Sorry, that's a you problem, but there is another option yeah. here. And you should maybe start considering that other option mm-hmm. rather than digging your heels in so much mm-hmm. into the thing that's clearly not working for you anymore. No, ser- seriously. Because then it, the pattern of victimization starts. Yes. And why does this always happen to me? Why does the world hate me? Why does the universe <laughs> do this to me? And it's like, bro. Like, I will validate all your feelings, but at some point you need to put your, what is it called, big boy pants yeah. on? Yeah, <laughs> big girl and, panties, big yeah, boy panties on. Yeah, whatever the fuck that is, um, <laughs> and just get it together. Because there's people, there's always someone in a worse situation than you, and they're they're trying their best. You know what I mean? Yeah. So before you start feeling sorry for yourself, uh, do something different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got options. We make got an, options. Make another plan. And you know there's, I mean? there's option A and there's option B, and sometimes there's a C. And maybe right. it just takes some intense creative thought to come come up with it. Yeah. You know? For sure. <laughs> Something just popped into my mind of thinking about, like, Sagittarius energy. Yeah. And also kind of this topic of, like, I think people really hate Sag because – of this play of freedom, we're like, well, we always have another option. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we genuinely feel that way. Yeah, I mean, and I feel do. other people, like I said earlier, they they hate the other option so much. They feel like there's there's nothing there for me. For sure. I mean, also, um, Sag, they're thinking so abundantly and so positively, and Jupiter is so grand and large that, like, there is going to be another option because my mind is going to create it and it's going to manifest it for me. Yeah. And most people would do well to learn from that. 100%. 100%. <laughs> That's the power of, like, humans as well. You yeah. know, we are creators, manifestors. Like, uh-huh. we run this earth. Uh, that, why, <laughs> why do you think uh, the ninth house, you know, Sagittarius rules over, like, knowledge, you know? Is because the mind is a very, very powerful thing. Mm -hmm. You want to create something better. You want to create a better reality, a better option. Your mind can do that. Mm -hmm. And Sagittarius energy understands that. And the spark to make that 
happen is positivity. Yeah. Because you can't go into it being all grumpy. It's so true. Like, I'm not, I know, I, no. 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 <laughs> you can't. Well, no. because then you're definitely not going to get the thing. No. Like, there's only a, a <laughs> few signs I would do. Let's see where the day takes us. And Sagittarius <laughs> is at the top of that list because we're excited, we're hopeful, and we'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. And I genuinely feel like that pisses some people off. Oh, well, of course about it does. Sagittarius and Sagittarius energy. Well, they they hate it because they ain't it. You know. What I mean? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they they hate it because they don't understand how it comes so easily to you guys. Everyone yeah. hates the person that's always too positive. Like there's the fake nice people, and then sometimes Sagittarius. Yeah, it can be that like fake positivity, mm-hmm. the negative aspects of it. But most of the time, it's just cheery and happy and excited about life and adventure and. Most people, this world has kicked their ass. Yeah. <laughs> they can't help but be like, why are you so happy? No, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I Like I said, Sag feels like they got options. And I feel like other people don't always feel like they got options. And, and that's their damn fault. Because it's true. We all got options. We all options. got options. <laughs> we really do. Everybody got options. Yeah. Everybody got choices. Everybody got choices and options. No, for real. Yeah. Um, but, but they don't feel like it. No. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For you to teach yourself. Right. That's why you need to get out there in the world and travel like Sag because mm-hmm. you will meet different types of people outside of what you're comfortable with. Outside of your comfort zone, that's when you start seeing the different options. Right. New experiences. Exactly. Open new pathways. Yes. Which is... <laughs> How sim- many traveling sc- <laughs> scenarios can we make in this? <laughs> Catch different flights. <laughs> Feel different feelings. <laughs> no, it's so true though. It is. Because you don't you don't know what you're missing until you try that new thing. Yeah, you don't. You re- really don't. Like and uh, unless you put it put yourself in the space to even see it. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like yeah. so many people don't leave their hometowns. Like it baffles me. Can we get a fucking statistic on that? I need to know <laughs> how many people do not like they go to high school there, they go to college there, and they just don't leave their hometown. Yeah, I need to know because I I will cry for you, I will die for you. <laughs> I, will, I, I mean, like, yeah, like actually, missed connections, like the yes. things you have missed out on. Oh my god, I know. You know what I mean? And it's just I I listen. I don't want anyone to be like, oh well, like, like not everyone has the you know means i didn't have the means like i was on a full fucking financial aid had to take out student loans literally literally like got grants because my family was so poor at the time you know what i mean like and i have no regrets i have no regrets and i knew i had to get the fuck out of there because i needed freedom Mm -hmm. and it would have made me happy do i have student loans right now yes do i have any regrets no i met my soul family multiple people for my soul family when I went to college, mm-hmm. you know, and I want people to understand that you have the choice. Yes. You have the option and you don't even have to go to college. No. You can just go to another town. Literally. Like, I, just go to the next think, town over. Literally. Like you have a job <laughs> there. You can find another job just like the one you have there in another city. Yes. You could do the same exact job in another city, you know? Yeah. And I get that it's a little scary. You know, you may cry the first few nights. But you have us. You have us. <laughs> and you'll make it TV. through, okay? <laughs> I'll never forget when I first moved up here. Yeah. I cried my first few nights. I was like, I don't have any friends. This is going to fucking suck. That's because I wasn't there the yeah. first week of college. And then a week later, I met Sarah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it was a sad yeah. first week. But Homesickness is a real thing. Yes. No, I just can't imagine. Not coming out here to San Francisco, not meeting my best friend, not meeting the love of my life, not getting closer with my grandparents. Like, yeah. my life just completely changed for the better. No, seriously. And I need everyone, even if, honestly, even if you go back to your hometown, just leave for a little while. You know, you're going to be way better off. Yeah. I encourage you mm-hmm. to not stay but whatever, the choice yeah, is yours. Just yeah. get out there, little birdie. Fly a little bit. Yeah, fly a little bit. And you guys, you know, um, there is other countries that the value of the dollar is higher uh-huh. than whatever currency they use. So, like, 
you could be rich rich there. You know what I mean? Why? And, you know, obviously be a good citizen when you move to those other countries. Yes. Um, but I feel like there's just options. There's options. Yes. Literally, other there are some countries that will pay you to come live there because their communities are dying and they want them to yeah. be revived. You know? So don't say you don't got options because they will pay you to yeah. live there. And guess what? A lot of people want to learn English. You could be an yes. English teacher. Like, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, seriously. <laughs> bada boom, bada bang. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> we believe in you. Yes. Send us postcards from yes. fucking wherever you go. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about Scandival because, you know, we're two reunions deep. Huh? And I've just been seeing some <laughs> shit that's been pissing me the fuck off. So I need to address make, it. Make some points. Mm-hmm. Um, I hate the fact that everyone is coming for, like, Ariana and being, like, well, not everyone, but, like, the people that are saying this that are, like, well, you, you made out with Tom when him and Kristen were together and, like, you weren't, he left you because you weren't having sex with him. Like, all this bullshit, all this shit. Anyway, yeah, I know, I know. I'm getting into it. I'm getting into it. Oh, Lord. So I just want to talk to the people, and honestly, the people that probably need to listen are not the people watching. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe They'll send our it. people will make a clip yeah. and send it. Yeah. You know what it's I mean? It's true. It's true. They be doing that. So we I, would, I just want to say there's three things, that, and especially about the situation, a lot of people who don't even watch the show or whatever, are like, why does this matter? Like everyone gets cheated on. Like people are literally saying this shit. Like who cares? Like. I got cheated on it. I didn't get all these like sponsorships and da 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 da. Oh like, my like, I'm just god! Like, okay, you sound like a real weird hater. Like yeah, like, yeah. Clearly, you guys are not the same person on this planet. Right. Like this is like, so every person that got like we're talking about a specific yes. situation. We're talking about a show, a reality <laughs> show. Like don't make it too personal. Right. Anyway, that's been on for like ten years. Literally, right? three <laughs> things that make this situation different is that they were together for ten years. Ten years. 10 fucking years. They own a home together. That's practically married in this day yes. age. Okay? So if someone that you've been together for 10 years is having an affair and cheats on you, like, that's pretty disgusting. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is what makes the situ- situation different. It's not just any type of cheating. It's a 10-year uh-huh. relationship. Um, the second thing is that it happened with her best friend. Right. You guys, it's one thing if someone cheats on you. It's another thing when he keeps it in the circle. Mm. Like, you know, like, that's just the ultimate fucking betrayal, and it's so grimy and disgusting, Ugh. and I just, I can't ever it get hurts. down with that. It hurts. Like, and it, I, as I like to say it, it's lazy. There's millions Ooh. of people around this world. You just had to find the person that was the, one of the closest people to your partner. Like, you just shoved the knife in there, and you just dug it deep. You know what I mean? Like, that's just gross. Lazy and really bold. Like, it's so bold. Like, her best friend? Mm. Like, one of her best friends. Like, to the point where she felt comfortable with her sleeping over. I know. You know what I mean? And it came out that while they were sleeping over, allegedly this dude left, you know, his partner's bed, their bed together, to go to the guest room, fuck her, and come no. back. No. And this is multiple occasions of this happening. Tell me this isn't grimy, you guys. <sighs> come on. How can you not have, how can some people not have empathy for this situation? What a sicko. How can he come lay back next to her? No, it's like disgusting. Nothing. And And still, it's, this is well after all this came out. He still has no remorse, by the no. way. No, no. He has absolutely no remorse. He called all the people that were coming over to all the friends of Ariana that were coming over to check on her a party. He's like, she never let me have parties. What? It's like, um, it's not a party. It's all the people coming to make sure she's okay after it came out that you've been having a seven month affair. He's, he's gross. He's weird. He's a psycho. He's a psycho. And then third is the fact that it was happening for seven months and it could be even longer, but it's been confirmed for seven months. Yeah. This isn't a one-time mistake, like, oh, my God, I cheated one night, whatever. Seven-month affair is an act of choice. Yeah. You guys, this is disgusting. Like, it's gross. Yeah. You guys saying everybody gets cheated on, it's because he wasn't having sex. Someone not having sex with you does not mean that you get to cheat with them. And no. it's gross because most of the people that I'm seeing, obviously, most of the people that are into these shows are women. Yeah. So I'm looking at these Karens writing this shit. I'm like, I'm sorry you hate yourself this much. I'm sorry that you think that if you cannot sexually please your man's appetite, you deserve to get cheated on. I'm right. sorry that you feel that way. 
Uh, like, you know what I mean? Someone doesn't want to be with you because you're not having enough sex. Break up. Break up with the person. Like, right. they deserve to break up with the person. Seriously. You know what I mean? It's not on, like, a quick calendar, <sighs> like, seven seven days. Okay, she didn't fuck me for seven days. You know what I mean? Time to go cheat. Like, there's no rule. <laughs> you don't like something in a relationship. You let your partner know. You say you're not happy with them. And then... You leave the relationship. Right. It's that easy. Because we're communicating. Like, why are adults. these women making these excuses for this man and this hoe? <sighs> because that's the excuse their boyfriends gave to them when they cheated. And on then them, they forgave and them. And they forgave them. And they're and that's angry. How. Yeah. Exactly. So they're like, here is this tidbit of information so you can get over it too. And, and we're like, no, you shouldn't have gotten over it either. Like, this is fucking wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish people understood. Your moral compass, the things you do and say, it teaches me a lot about you. You know what I mean? Right. Like, by you saying, well, she wasn't having sex with him, or who cares, everyone gets cheated on. Now I'm looking at you funny, Mm -hmm. because now I learned something about you Mm -hmm. and your character. Something I didn't know before, but by you making those comments, now I know how you operate. Now I know how much, or the lack thereof, self-love when it comes to you. Yeah. Yeah. How I will not come to you with any of my feelings. No, it's just gross. It's weird. Like, like mm, my thing is if someone does you, this mm, and the proof is there, she, they've admitted to it, and people still ride for them. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, so like, so what is wrong to you? Like, what is someone doing something bad to you? Right. You know what I mean? If this isn't something that you consider wrong or like it's not that big of a deal, what what is? Yeah. No, does genuinely. it have to be murder? Like, like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, wh- where is the line for you? For real. Especially if we're speaking in terms of relationships and dating, because this is the ultimate betrayal no, of all no, no, betrayal. No, I think you hit it right on the head. <laughs> it happened to them, and yeah, they for- they forgave them. Yeah. It, it must have happened to these people, mm-hmm. and they forgave the person for it. So now they feel inclined to be angry at other women that don't forgive their partner for yeah. this exact thing. Yeah. It's like, why do you care? I mean, if you're happy with your partner, like, it shouldn't really matter. Right. Like, if that's what you chose to forgive, that's fine. Yeah. But we can have empathy for the other person that's going through the same thing because we feel like it's fucked up. Yeah. It's almost them admitting, like, yeah, what, what, what happened to me was fucked up. And maybe I, I deserved more love when it happened to me. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And people are upset because they brushed it off off and under the rug. And maybe they didn't have, because like Ariana clearly has <laughs> literally a crew of mm-hmm. people who love and support her. Mm-hmm. Like they had a whole ass Excel sheet of every night who's going to be with her because she also deals with depression and like you know anxiety and all that shit. They want to make sure she was never alone. Like mm-hmm. she has a tribe that is loving on her and protecting her besides the whole world obviously being team ariana so i can't help but think that a lot of maybe people are jealous Mm -hmm. and it's like well if your your tribe isn't doing that for you if you don't have one then then find one like you know what i mean because you deserve this too one thousand you go through something traumatic and yes it's traumatic you deserve to have people ride for you and for people to be on your side Mm -hmm. also though i'm thinking maybe they are extra mad because the people who were meant to be on their side didn't stick with them once they stayed with their cheating ass partner. Uh, well, you know, I don't, I don't but blame again, them. Kind of sounds like a you problem. Yeah, I don't blame them. Like if it's <laughs> like a multi, like you know, you, you know what I mean. We want you to love yourself more. I don't know, dude. I don't, yeah, like oh my god. Okay, I'm trying to think of myself. I am. Let's say I have an Ariana in my uh, group. And this happens to Ariana in my group. And Ariana wants to get back together with Tom. Uh huh. I think I would be like, I, I'm not okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, um, I don't know if I can. They stay as close on you with for you seven months I, because no, I mean I hate them. I hate the person, especially like a narcissist like him. Right. Like, like, how? How? I don't. I, I don't want to be around this person. This person is dangerous. Yeah. Like Lala said. How could I genuinely show up for you as a friend? Yeah. When I hate them. 
for what they did to you and how Literally. they treated you. And how do I know they're not going to continue you, to do this to and you? And how you lied to me too. You know what I mean? Like for all of these other girls like in Vanderpump, like they had a friendship with him. So they feel betrayed by this man too. Yep. You know? 10 years like, long. 14 years for Sheena. Right. And I feel like that's something, a factor that people are forgetting about as well and would piss me off if that happened to one of my friends and be like, how fucking, like what the fuck? No, dead ass. We were cool too. Dead and ass. you looked me in my eye and lied to me? No, it's gross. And you, whoa. It's gross. I mean, it's also gross because me as my, me, my boyfriend is probably cool with your shitty, you know what I mean, man. Yeah. I don't want my boyfriend, I mean, my boyfriend probably don't want to be around your weird man now. Yeah. And like, like the group is tainted. The <laughs> whole group is tainted. <laughs> you know yes. what I mean? Yes. So it's like, why should I go out of my way to forgive some someone that did something so unforgivable to make you feel happy? Like, right. I hate this for you and I hate this for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I feel like people are <clears throat> genuinely forgetting that when this does happen in real life, friendships break up and yeah. people you know what i mean it like, affects the whole dynamic exactly and all of this is airing for us live on television right now you know so of course like people are going to be talking about it more and we're seeing the fallouts of relationships happening like in real time now absolutely. you know absolutely and i just want to like everyone put yourselves genuinely in that shoes imagine if one of your friends had a relationship for 10 years and they were cheated on by one of the new girls that you so openly accepted into the group it would be fucking scandal for months on months on months for years. in my friendship for years. in the friendship you don't think you know what i, I mean? don't talk like, to maya about stupid shit that happened in college that is literally minuscule compared right to this. <laughs> right no this shit would be no i would dissect this shit every morning forever no forever and honestly <laughs> Like I've said before, I've been watching this show since I was fucking 19 from first season. So, like, I've grown with this show. And, right. And I actually talked to my boyfriend about this because I was talking to him about why I love reality TV. And he loves that I love it. He He's never the type to make fun of me for it. He watches it with me sometimes, mm -hmm. like, talks shit. And it's like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> um, but, like, I genuinely en enjoy dissecting human psychology, mm -hmm. the dynamic of different types of relationships, mm -hmm. how people communicate with each other, how people communicate with people that they're really close with or new people within the same group. Like, you know what I mean? Like cheating, mm -hmm. scandal, yeah. um, disrespect or love. You know what I mean? Yeah. Opening up, like different types of personalities, like understanding them and viewing them on TV, especially seasons or shows that have multiple seasons and watching them grow. Like it's so fascinating for me. For sure. So, and these are real people, you know yeah. what I mean? So to watch something like this happen, like I, I am so invested, like emotionally, but also psychologically. Because yeah. Because I want to understand why people feel comfortable doing some grimy shit like this. Uh-huh. How will they react to the people that it happened to? Will they forgive? Will they won't won't they? Like yeah. I, I just wanna I have so many feelings and thoughts about it. Yeah. And it's so fascinating. It's like a big human experiment. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yes. And we're seeing, like I said, in real time how these people are reacting to this unfortunate fallout of, you know, a a relationship and friendship. And how that ripples throughout the friendship. Yeah. You know, like, this is real shit. Yeah. And I'm obviously heartbroken that this happened to her. But yeah. I love how open she has been mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. um, because I hope, you know, there's always going to be haters. But I hope that there are some women who are able to heal along with her. Same. And, and I think there are. Yeah. I see the comments on her post. Yeah. So that makes me happy. Yeah, because so it like, all happens for a reason and, like, I genuinely don't think – it's sad, but I think something drastic like this needed to happen for her to see his true colors. Yeah. Because I think she had some big rose-colored glasses mm -hmm. on when it came to him. Because mm -hmm. a lot of people – like, the only reason we liked Tom and Ariana was because of Ariana. Yeah. Like, Tom was always a little bit like – like, he just loved showing off, and he just seemed like he wanted to – wanted to be the center of attention mm. um and it bugged me but there was some other toxic men on that show so they were able to take on that spotlight mm. of being the shittiest man and slowly when the other toxic men were taken out of the show it was very noticeable that tom sandoval is also very much toxic and yeah. maybe the most toxic of them all yeah 
Hmm. I would say yes. Yeah. Not, I will confirm. <laughs> I was just thinking we should maybe do a video where we talk about all the Vanderpump Rules um, signs. All, oh, the, all the cast members' signs. Uh, like there's sun and moon. Yes. Like that would be so fun. Yes. That would be very fun. Right? Let's do that. Let's do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You guys want it? You have to comment down below. Yes. All right? Yes. I feel like that shit would be so fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all right lovely people thank you for hanging out with your besties <laughs> um while we talk about astrology intuition moral compass mm-hmm. vanderbilt rules shitty men right. shitty women you know, right. you know what I mean? <laughs> it, it all exists it all it, coexists it, it all kind of came together this episode it really did it really did right uh-huh. Uh-huh. it really did <laughs> the moral compass of reality tv <laughs> um if you are listening on spotify or apple mm-hmm. don't forget to leave us a review on those apps mm-hmm. and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to subscribe leave us a comment show us some love mm-hmm. like us five stars five we star love resort. you so much we're gonna link our socials around here and we'll see you later bye